So in the next 45 minutes, um, as soon as you have the presentation, uh, I will give you an update on, uh, on VMware strategy. And um, so the, the title of the, the keynote is uh, IT as a service, because uh, as Piotr mentioned, we are very well known as the leader in server virtualization. But uh, today we have uh, 480,000 customers who have adopted server virtualization with uh, VMware. And um, uh, basically, uh, those, those customers, the, the end destination of this virtualization journey is IT as a service. And uh, really, uh, server virtualization completely changed over the last 10 years the way that the data center was configured, the, the way it was operated. Um, there is today, um, uh, it, it was completely changed over the last 10 years. Uh, provision, server provisioning completely changed through to server virtualization. And uh, what's, uh, what's happening next is indeed the, the cloud. And there is no, there would be, there is not a single cloud today that would rely on, on Unix. There is no Unix cloud, there is no mainframe cloud. All clouds rely on x86 and on server virtualization which is really the revolution we brought about in the data center over the last 10 years. So really the next 45 minutes, it's all about uh, how are we going towards this era of IT as a service, uh, cloud, etc. So he here is a, a heads up of uh, the benefits VMware customers have already experienced in the past and are likely to experience with us in the rest of the journey. So the, the numbers are quite big. Um, we estimate that the 10 billion is the, the cost savings that VMware customers experience alone in 2012 at a worldwide level. So this is only server virtualization. The, the ROI of investing into server virtualization is sort of immediate. By, by consolidating your server, you have an immediate reduction in capital expenditure. But we believe and uh, this is a good part of the keynote uh, this morning, that the, this is only the beginning of the savings. In fact, we believe that um, those savings at the global level can be multiplied by a factor of six or seven if we extend the power of virtualization that we so far only apply to the server virtualization, what we call compute virtualization. If we extend the power of this virtualization, to other layers of infrastructure in the data center, starting with networking and continuing with storage. And if we do that, we believe that the customers will benefit an exponential type of cost saving in the future. And not only that, uh, VMware has been recognized with this capacity to help customers save capital expenditure. But now we are seeing a trend, especially as some customers have virtualized 60 70% that not only they reduce capital expenditure, they start also to take the savings and to reinvest them into the development of new applications that the business is asking for. And with those new applications, which are usually web-based applications, mobile applications, cloud applications, in fact, what is at stake is uh, that the companies who develop and roll out those applications they look for a competitive advantage. They try to increase their, their revenue. They want to be more competitive in the market. So it's not only about uh, reducing capital expenditure. Increasingly, once this is really done, uh, it's about getting a competitive advantage. So how can we help customers? How can we help you to, to get those benefits, not only capex reduction, but also competitive advantage? Well, we believe that uh, we can, over the next decade, like we did over the past decade, radically simplify IT again. We already did it with server virtualization, but we believe we can have the same impact in the next decade by delivering infrastructure, as we said, for cloud services. And when you talk about cloud, in fact, it's um, about delivering IT as a service but it also means that somebody consumes this IT as a service. And the people who consume this IT as a service, in fact, uh, you, you, you realize it, they have uh, all types of devices today. They have uh, mobiles, they have 
smartphones, they have tablets, the PC is no longer the only game in town. And that's why we really deliver this infrastructure for cloud services to all devices, not only the PC. PC remains one of them, but there are different other types of end devices to consume those IT services. And um, so these are our mission. And uh, we have uh, three strategies to achieve that mission. And I will go through each of these strategies in this keynote. So the first one is, um, as I said, to expand the power of server virtualization to completely virtualize the entire data center, all the layers of the infrastructure. And this is what we call the software-defined data center. The, the second strategy is about uh, expanding this uh, cloud architecture we have within the data center, which will be completely software-driven, policy-based, and extend it to the public cloud to make it for customers um, a, a very seamless experience that they can run their workloads, their applications, without changing the applications, either within uh, the, the, the data center on premise or within a public cloud off premise and have that as a seamless experience. This, this is what we call enabling hybrid cloud. And the third thing, as I, I already mentioned it, as the PC um, is only one of the end devices, endpoint devices, we want to embrace mobility. We want to help IT cope with this explosion of device and applications and um, avoid it becoming a mess uh, so that uh, IT can really deliver all these IT services to these users with all these devices. So the end destination we believe in and we want to enable is IT as a service. So let's start with uh, the first part of uh, this strategy, which is to, to make um, the, software def the, the data center much more software-defined, policy-driven. As Piotr said, uh, the, the curves were quite impressive. You know, uh, we had uh, last year we did 4.6 billion um, revenue. Um, we have more than 480,000 customers. Um, the customers, um, when we survey them, we survey about 1,000 customers uh, every six months to see the, the trends, what's going on, and uh, in this survey. Uh, we, we constantly see that uh, the more the customers virtualize, the higher the return on investment. And we see that um, we have uh, three types of uh, customers in terms of maturity of the adoption of virtualization. In the first stage, it's mainly about capital uh, expenditure reduction. The second stage, they start to optimize the, the virtual environment, especially when they have virtualized 30, 40, 50 percent of their environment. So it's really about reducing operating expenses. And in the last phase, this is when they start to say not only, OK, we reduce cost, but we try to, to make IT a game changer to better support the business with applications that help compete better uh, in the market. And that's where you know, it's uh, IT as a service, where we empower the business to be more competitive through IT. So all this um, has been happening over the, the last 10 years. And uh, IT as a service is the, the destination. And so we already see that uh, major benefits have been achieved. Uh, and just to, to recap the types of benefits we achieve with server virtualization, if you think back uh, without server virtualization, uh, provisioning a physical server took weeks. One month, two months was not unusual for the business to get uh, IT provision a server with the a, with a business application uh, to serve their needs. So with the um, virtualization of the servers, uh, suddenly it was possible to provision a virtual machine, um, which is a software entity that, that attracts from the physical server within a few minutes at a, at a much lower cost. But this was not enough because the business doesn't care about a virtual machine. What they care about is an entire business application. And what happened in the data center is that uh, even if we, we have virtual machines, which is all about software, in fact, the other layers of the data center, storage, networking, load balancing, uh, security, availability, to, to, to basically attach storage, it's a manual process. Uh, to attach a network, it's a manual process. 
So at the end, we had a piece of the data center which was moving to a software-driven data center, which was the compute piece, but all the other infrastructure layers are still mainly physical, and uh, they are not yet software-driven. And as a result of that, uh, it, hold on, it, 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 it uh, prevented for the business to get this entire business application prevented, uh, provisioned in a matter of minutes. It, uh, it slowed down the provisioning rate, uh, and we are back uh, to several days with a lot of help tickets uh, to attach the storage, the network, etc. So that, that's the reality. So much more is possible. We believe it much more is possible, but how is it possible? And what we believe is that we can apply exactly the same principles that we apply to server virtualization to the other layer of the infrastructure in the data center. And as a result, we would have a completely virtualized data center, a software-driven data center. So what, what's, what's the problem today? Why, why doesn't everybody do that already if it were so simple? Well, the reality today is that the data centers have grown. It's a history. There were many decisions in the past. Uh, it's uh, mainly dominated by a client-server type of model. And um, the reality is that there are vertical silos. The data center today is organized in vertical silos, driven by hardware, operating systems, type of applications. And those silos, in fact, um, it's not the right model for a data center for the cloud era. Why? Because you cannot scale up indefe indefinitely in a vertical silo. It's like um, you know, when you build a, a building, a skyscraper, you cannot go to the sky. So if you really want to go into cloud computing, we need to find a way to break those silos, to scale horizontally all these layers in the data center, and then you can scale up, scale down, uh, based on the, on the needs of the services that are required. So it's all about breaking the silos. Today, the, the silos within the data center haven't been broken. There is just uh, one area where there is this horizontal uh, breaking of the silo, it's, it's server virtualization, but all the other layers, it's, they are in their silo, and as a result, um, the resources are underutilized. Um, the, 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 the hardware resources are underutilized in each silo, the human resources are underutilized in each silo, and um, the, the intent is that we break those silos and that we scale them horizontally. And that's exactly what we try to do with the software-defined data center. We want companies to adopt the software-defined data center, and we want to enable uh, the adoption of the software-defined data center. So we, 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 are, we, we will basically enable virtualization of network storage, as we did with compute, and we will add a management layer on top of that, which is completely about software. So the, the, the key principles are we, we apply here are abstraction, pooling, and automation. With abstraction, in fact, we manage to decouple the applications from the underlying hardware. So this allowed uh, to, to, to get a freedom of uh, the underlying hardware and uh, in the case of VMware, also of the operating system. So you can start to move around the workloads across a pool of server. So we have the, the, abstraction, um, of the, the abstraction from the underlying hardware. Then we have the, the pooling of the resources. These allow the, the, the server consolidation and the capex reduction. And then once everything is uh, abstracted and pooled, then you can automate it with software. Otherwise, you can just run scripts of what you do manually, but you cannot automate it. You cannot, uh, you cannot automate um, uh, hardware with software. It's much easier to automate software abstractions of underlying hardware uh, with software, and that's where you get really the unprecedented agility and uh, reduction in operating expenses. So the software-defined data center, if I, if I give a definition of it, it's uh, about uh, having all infrastructure layers virtualized, like we did for compute, but for the other layers, and delivered as a service. And most importantly, 
the control of this data center is also entirely automated by software. So it's policy driven uh, instead of manual scripts. And if you do that, then you can start to segment your data center in a virtual data center, for instance, for one area for test and dev, one for finance, one for sales and marketing. And for each of the business that you serve, you can faster provision entire applications. So the, really the, the breakthrough we see in the future by doing that, by fully virtualizing the entire data center, by making it software driven, is that uh, IT will not only be able to provision a virtual machine in a matter of minutes, but an entire application in a matter of minutes. And that's really the, the promise of the software defined data center. And we have started to, to, to define the vision of what a software defined data center is over the last 18 months. And uh, um, in the next months, uh, we are going to announce a series of products uh, that enable the virtualization of the other layers. And this is quite unique. VMware really is pioneering the software defined data center. We try to show thought leadership in that area. And we believe uh, that the, the vision and our ability to implement uh, the, on this vision uh, is unique in the market, especially at a time where there is a lot of noise about virtualization being commoditized, being a subset of an operating system. In fact, we believe that virtualization in the cloud era is the most strategic thing you should look at, and um, it enables all these benefits. So what we see is that uh, the software-defined data center, it enables the business growth by making the, the data center more agile, more nimble. And for the traditional client-server application, I think now this is sort of well-known. Uh, everybody knows the benefits of virtualizing applications, critical applications. But uh, what happens now is that um, all the new applications, the cloud applications, increasingly start to get virtualized as well. And uh, you can use the same platform, the software-driven data center, to both virtualize the existing legacy application and those new type of cloud applications uh, for mobile users that have been developed in a completely different way. So it's one platform, but two types of applications, and uh, they can be scaled, and um, the, the provisioning can be automated much better than it was the case before. So how can you go there? And currently, we see two major logical paths. One is the, the fast lane uh, for companies that are ready organizationally and technologically uh, to go directly to, to, to the cloud, to the software-defined data center. And the, the other path is a more incremental path with the different steps. Uh, and you take the steps over one, two, three years and start somewhere. So let's have a look first at uh, the incremental path. In 2011, we started to, well, so 2011, as Piotr said, was really the year when suddenly the world was more virtualized than physical. Over half of the workloads we are no longer running on physical servers, but we are running on a, in a virtual environment. So the customers, our 480,000 customers, realized that um, they can get even more cost savings by optimizing this virtual infrastructure. So we, we, we brought to market the, the vCenter operations management suite exactly to do that, to optimize, to do better performance management, capacity management, configuration management of a virtual environment. And by doing that, basically, they, they, they created just additional savings. So what we see today is um, management has become a natural add-on of uh, a virtual infrastructure. As soon as you reach a certain threshold of virtualization of your workloads, and it makes sense as soon as you have, let's say, 50 virtual machine, if you add management, you will increase the cost savings you get out of your infrastructure. So we created a bundle called WeSphere with Operations Management that was uh, generally available in March this year, where basically we bundle vSphere and this vCenter Operations Management, the standard edition. And uh, I will say a few words of it. And those customers really don't think about cloud at all. They just want to better run servers that are virtualized, and they better want to manage them, and they even don't want to listen 
or think of cloud. It's not on their agenda, but they want to run a more optimized infrastructure. And after that, of course, they will add a storage. They will add a networking in their virtual um, in their in a virtual way. And only at the end, maybe in two or three years, they will think of how can we provision cloud services faster uh, to reach the, the software-driven data center. Okay, so this year with operations management, in a, in a nutshell, uh, if you are looking at uh, investing into virtualization today, uh, we really recommend you to have the management thinking immediately integrated uh, because you, you can you can, in fact, if you already are a, a vSphere customer, adding management gives roughly, we can say, it doubles the saving you already got from vSphere by adding management. If you are a new customer, we believe that the best is immediately thinking of virtualizing and managing, managing at the same time. So we have a, a few um, a quite interesting uh, upgrade paths for all the editions of vSphere you know, to adopt um, this vSphere with operations management. I encourage you to, to look at it and, um, well, make up your, your own mind. Uh, but uh, it's really the, the trend we see. It's no longer virtualization, virtualization standalone. Uh, it's much more virtualized with virtualization with management, what we call managed virtualization. The, the fast track, um, you can... Uh, go there with vCloud Suite. So vCloud Suite is the, the first and only uh, cloud infrastructure platform in the market that enables the software-defined data center. We announced vCloud Suite uh, last year at uh, VMworld in the, in the USA in August uh, for the infrastructure part, and then uh, at uh, Barcelona in Europe for the management part. So it's an integrated suite of products that uh, really enables the software-defined data center. And um, just to, to mention a few, a few, a few numbers, um, I told you that uh, we, we did a $4.6 billion uh, revenue last year. Uh, so in Q4 last year, we did uh, more than $1 billion revenue. And just to give you a, an order of magnitude, the adoption of vCloud Suite by mature customers who already had vSphere Enterprise Plus, who already had thought of the cloud, who already had a good strategy in terms of uh, a disaster recovery, availability, or had thought of management, etc. We made uh, the first quarter of availability of vCloud Suite over 100 million of revenue, just to, to show you that there are some customers uh, who have virtualized a lot already, who have adopted uh, vSphere Enterprise Plus, today already, to, to deploy an integrated suite to accelerate their move to IT as a service and to the cloud. And uh, there, there is quite compelling uh, a business case as well. We have an ROI calculator on our website where you can uh, enter the, the data from your own data center so that you, you, you can play with the numbers and make the business case. Uh, in this case, it's just an example of a company with 1,000 servers um, and uh, what we see is that um, the, the ROI is a, is a factor of four, and usually the payback period is less than one year. So quite compelling case uh, if you want to, do, to go in the fast lane to the software-defined data center. But you don't have to, to believe me or to believe us. Let's listen to a customer, Revlon, uh, who will talk about their journey on virtualization and you will see that they really share the, the type of vision that I'm exposing uh, right now. Revlon has had our global cloud for the last two years in operations. What that cloud has delivered is a couple really key things. First is 6.9 uptime. So we just don't go down anymore. Second thing that we've delivered is savings and cost avoidance of $70.4 million. We watch everything, every penny we spend. And deploying the cloud has allowed us to avoid so much in infrastructure cost. The cloud almost runs itself. Our cloud makes 15,000 automated moves a month with no human intervention. We don't really have server people anymore. What used to take six or eight weeks to get a server in the data center, now is five minutes. Our ratio of physical server to you know, virtual server is one to seven. We're one to 34 this year. 
That's a 500% increase in capacity without cost. Uh, it gives us money to spend to develop the business and develop new products and advertise on TV. We've essentially taken the infrastructure out of the way of the business. VMware is our core. It is at the core of our cloud. It's really the center of the ecosystem of our partners. It allows us to be very fast. And simplicity equals speed. Speed equals competitive advantage. It's always on, it always works, it's always available, and it saved us a lot of money. Our chief function is really making systems work for people rather than people working for the systems. So I would buy Revlon with this advert, you know, and so indeed we have a lot of customers who share this vision of uh, proven ability to reduce cost and uh, increasingly start to show a competitive advantage. So the, the second uh, strategy in our mission is to enable hybrid cloud. So before we, we define uh, what is unique in uh, VMware's approach to enable hybrid cloud, I, I wanted to, to start to, to talk about what's the problem. What problem do we try to solve? Well, the problem is that today there is an increasing gap between the business and IT. On the one hand, the line of business they are under pressure because increasingly they need to bring to market new services. So they, they hire, they have developers who build those new services. They want to bring them into production as fast as possible because every delay in putting those applications in production is lost money, lost revenue. So they are hugely under pressure. And more and more, they, they basically they go to public cloud providers that provide them more agility and more attention that they get from internal IT. And as a result, they, they see public cloud as a way basically to consume IT services, to pay for what they consume, and they start to really bypass IT. On the other hand, you have the, the IT teams. They really um, focus on keeping the lights on in the data center. They, they, they manage the existing infrastructure, the existing applications. And overall, they don't really have the, the trust that public cloud can give them an enterprise-grade type of IT services like they do in the data center. So bottom line, there is a kind of mistrust, a, a chasm uh, that is building up between IT and, uh, and the business. And uh, we believe that the way we approach hybrid cloud is a way to bridge that chasm. So the, our view of um, consuming public cloud is that we see public cloud as a seamless extension of a private cloud approach of the software-defined data center. So the architecture for hybrid cloud is the software-defined data center. And we believe that you can run the same technology on-premise in your data center, and you can run it off-premise with the service provider of your choice for the workloads you will select. Because you will see that uh, some workloads, you can run them, you believe it's better to run them internally. Some workloads might be, be better run externally. But what is important is, and that's where we focus on, is really that there is a seamless extension of the data center outside. And to make that possible, uh, we come to market with a common management and orchestration framework a common model for networking and security, and uh, ultimately also um, one support uh, across the data center and the public cloud. And you might have heard that we have announced our entry in the public cloud market uh, by launching a, um, a public cloud service operated by uh, VMware, but I will talk back, uh, I will talk about it in a few minutes. So the, the differentiation uh, that we bring is that um, we enable customers to run their applications virtualized without change, either internally in the data center or off-premise with a service provider or with the VMware hybrid cloud service. And we do, the no change is important because at the beginning I told you that what prevents IT from being more agile is that 
we, we have vertical silos in the data center. And the reality today is that the public, most of the public cloud providers today, they are just an additional silo, not within the data center, but outside of the data center. And we believe that uh, enabling this seamless experience, this inside-out experience, where public cloud, you can see it as a, as a rental model for a software-defined data center of premise. And we really want to enable that model of uh, consuming public cloud in a hybrid way. So how can that uh, work? So as I said, it's based on, uh, on the SDDC, the software defined, the software defined data center vision. Uh, you see that uh, you can consume uh, within the data center. And on the, the right side of the cloud, the public cloud, we have a, a network of service providers. We have overall 10,000 service providers that, uh, with, uh, that run services, public cloud services with VMware compatible technologies. And we have about 220 out of them that are cert API certified that basically um, uh, expose their services via a vCloud API. And um, these months we also have announced um, that uh, we enter the, the public cloud uh, market with this uh, hybrid approach. And uh, we launch vCloud hybrid service, uh, which will be available first uh, this summer in the United States and will be available uh, next year in 2014 in Europe as well. And so you will see a, a new acronym appearing. It's called uh, VCHS, so vCloud hybrid service. Uh, as I'm based in Switzerland, uh, I found it funny because uh, when I was in the U.S., they, I heard somebody talking about V-cheese. So I thought, is this a new type of cheese, you know, V-cheese? But in fact, it was meaning a V-cloud hybrid service, V-C-H-S. Okay, so the vision we have is uh, really to enable this inside-out experience, um, having customers who invested into virtualization, consume public cloud capacity in a hybrid way as, as a seamless experience. And to do that, we also announced that we want to, to engage the value-added resellers that uh, probably are your, your key contacts uh, in the region to sell so-called cloud credits. Cloud credit is um, it's like a token, it's like a voucher. Imagine you know that uh, today you want to virtualize further workloads but that you get requests from the business that they are considering public cloud services to go faster to market with some of the workloads. So what you can do is uh, you can buy cloud credits uh, from, from uh, your reseller and then redeem those credits with one of the certified service providers um, that then can deliver this seamless experience of hybrid cloud as I described it. And uh, there, are, there are today, we are in early days, but uh, we have about, uh, about 10 service providers across Europe who can deliver on that promise. And um, the, the resellers then can, can benefit of the cooperation with these service providers. Okay, so let's just have a quick example of a customer um, who, who, who has embraced hybrid cloud. And uh, typically it's a marketing example it's a Subaru, and um, I let the, um, the video uh, speak for itself. My name is Siddhartha Chatta, and I work for Carmichael Lynch as a technical architect. Uh, Carmichael Lynch is a advertising agency based out of Minneapolis, Minnesota in the U.S., and uh, we are the agency of record for Subaru of America. The campaign that we ran was called First Car Story, and it was related to the launch of the Subaru Impreza for 2012. Uh, the idea behind the campaign was to celebrate everyone's first car experience that they had, where it was either a junker or a hand-me-down. They were learning to drive in it and the kind of experiences that they may have had and the follies, and to try and bring those stories to life via a campaign in which one would type those stories and then we would attempt to animate it within 20 seconds or less. The campaign was run on a website in which we use Facebook Connect and uh, we would uh, 
allow people to type in a story using 150 words or less and uh, they could take certain keywords and uh, mark them as being important to the story and then we would also auto detect certain words that had uh, pre-built animations that were assigned to that word and then using a combination of all of those words we would create a video that converted the story from text into a 30 to 40 second animation. To design this project, we worked with two major developers. One was based out of London and Belfast. They designed the front end of the campaign, which was done in Flash. The back end of uh, this site required developers from Holland, and they helped us create the rendering engine. We also used a, a VMware partner named Bitbrains, and they helped us create the high-performance computing node, and that allowed us to use as much as 40 nodes at a time to simultaneously render stories. We use VMware technology for this project because it allows us to extend our budget in compute resources. Uh, we had high performance computing nodes that were uh, up to about 40 of them were available at peak times and then in non-peak times we would reduce those nodes down to the minimum that was necessary. The campaign was very successful. We had about 1.3 million visitors in the two months that we were driving media to it and we never had the site crash. The other way in which the campaign was successful was we leveraged a couple of million dollars worth of technology using high performance computing nodes that scaled on a needs be basis. As you can see, this is an example where marketing, for instance, goes to IT and says, can you help me doing these crazy things? You know, in two months time, I want to have a a new website that I haven't developed yet and uh, I might have 1.3 million visitors and they will buy a new generation of cars, you know, and you usually it takes uh, IT off guard because, you know, this is like, a, it's like if you had no full-time job, you could just do a full-time job delivering on these requests from this department and then you might have another department in sales who comes up with a similar idea and, and another department and so you see typically here um, this was a very, it was a campaign, a marketing campaign that was happening like in two or three months. And uh, in these two or three months, they needed external capacity, high performance computing. They needed to scale up uh, websites that was hosted externally. They needed to have these high performance computing capabilities. And there was no way that IT could deliver that, you know, uh, provision all the servers. So they decided to do it with a, uh, with a, a VMware service, VMware uh, a VSPP, a VMware service provider partner. And um, so they extended the capacity of their data center with those extended resources, but in a, in a completely seamless way. They, they couldn't make the difference between what was internal and what was external in the public cloud. Okay, so let's have a, a look at the, the third strategy, which is all about embracing mobility. Uh, now that the PC is no longer the only game in town. And a first, uh, a first chart here to, to show the a key trends that is going on right now. It's um, the, the explosion of different types of dev devices. This slide shows the time it took between the invention of the first PC and the year in which the, the different manufacturers of PCs shipped 100 million units of PC in one year. So it took 21 years. Then if you look at the smartphone, slight acceleration, it took 15 years between the first smartphone and this mark of 100 million shipments of smartphones per year. And guess what? With the tablets, it took four years. With products like iPad, in fact, in four years, the 100 million mark of, sh of units shipped was, was reached. So there is a, a, an explosion of new devices, and there might be other ones, you know, when you, when you, lead, when you read some futuristic uh, uh, research, they talk about uh, ultra-mobile devices, so there is a whole, a whole set of new devices that will appear, and um, so the, the, the users, they adopt those devices very often in a business to consumer environment 
not necessarily at work, but at the end, they want to use it at work as well. So we, we are in this multi-device era. It's just a fact. And we, we, the, the second trend is this consumerization. So with these multi-devices of the, the mobile uh, consumers, in fact, they have been using a lot of applications, Facebook, uh, they are going to, to application stores. Uh, many users are using uh, file sharing systems like Dropbox to share documents with colleagues and friends, etc. And uh, the reality is that uh, it's quite a good experience as a consumer for them. So they think, why wouldn't, have, why wouldn't I have the same type of business to consumer experience at work? And they are putting pressure on IT to deliver the same easy type of experience they, they see in a business to consumer environment. And um, so two trends, consumerization of IT that puts pressure on IT, and the second trend, multi-device era, this explosion of different devices. So how can VMware help um, basically embrace those trends and help IT to make the best out of it for the company, to have the IT infrastructure and the applications we talked about in the two previous sections, you know, delivered to all these devices, to all these users. So for the users, as I said, they want to access the applications, the data they want. They, they see that um, they would like to benefit from what they did in their personal life, in the business life, but separate it, and they want to choose their device. I remember four years ago in the company I worked for, they told me, you have a BlackBerry, if you have an iPhone, I will never take a call if you call IT support. Okay, so the problem is after six months, the CIO, the CEO, the VP of finance, the VP of sales, they had an iPhone. So they started to call IT and say, I want to do this, I want to connect, I want to read my emails. And after nine months, IT supported to other devices. So it's very clear that the, the balance of power shifted from a situation where IT dictated the device. Here's the device, take it. If you're not happy anyway, I won't take a call. But the reality changed and now it's the, the user that starts to dictate what type of device he wants to use, what productivity he wants to have, etc. So on the IT side, of course, the, the, the demand is that IT needs more control. If uh, you put your, let's say, your three-year strategy planning document on Dropbox, it's not really compliant, it's not really secure. So for IT, who is in charge of compliance and security, this is not really the right model. So they, they are looking for much better management of this new era, and they want basically also to control access to those applications, to those data, uh, to those desktops uh, with policies based on users and not on devices because every, every user has several devices. So that's the challenge, you know, how to balance um, the needs for freedom from the users and the need for control for IT. And if you look at um, how the end user computing uh, landscape evolved, basically we came from a place where the world was okay. We had a monopoly of the PC and Windows. We had some PC lifecycle management tools, and it was all okay, and then it became a mess. Within three years, it became a mess. You had all these devices, then you had uh, some early adoption of virtual desktop infrastructure, then uh, people say, okay, we have all these devices, we need to manage them. So we need to introduce mobile, uh, mobile device management. Then they said, oh, we have all these SaaS applications. So they said, okay, we need now to have mobile application management. Then we said, okay, we have all these SaaS applications. It would be good to have a single sign-on to access them. So you have a whole group of, uh, of uh, vendors who co came up with ID Federation single sign-on solutions. Then you have uh, this need to, to share files and synchronize files with Dropbox being the, the most prominent example. So this is what we call cloud file sharing and synchronization. And then you have the collaboration. And if, for instance, you follow the Gartner reports, in every single of these individual boxes, there are 25 vendors that provide a point solution. 
The problem is when IT integrates a point solution in five or seven boxes, then it becomes a nightmare to integrate those solutions, to manage them. And that's exactly what uh, VMware has started to work on and address. So we have, of course, a way to, to manage and deliver a desktop experience, either for physical desktops or for virtual desktop. And we have now also a multi-device workspace that allows users to access their data, their applications, and uh, their desktops in a very intuitive way. And this uh, solution is called Horizon Suite. It went uh, general availability in March. And I quickly say uh, a few words on each component. It's a suite. The three components are VMware Horizon Mirage, which is a, a central image management for Windows. It's a very it's a very good solution if you want to migrate to Windows 7, if you have backup recovery issues with PCs. You have a Horizon View, uh, which is, uh, delivers a, a virtual desktop experience to PC users, but also to mobile users. And uh, since uh, March now, uh, this um, uh, Horizon Workspace, uh, which is really great, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Swiss, so sometimes uh, I'm, I'm like the, the Finns, you know, you ask a Finn, are you happy? The Finn will say, yes, I'm happy. So I'm not sure if the guy is happy. But if you ask me, do you think that um, Horizon Workspace is a good solution? I say, yes, it's a fantastic solution. And I really encourage you to have a look at it. Because when you have your iPad, your iPhone, your PC, and you can see all your data in a, in a workspace, you see all the application for single sign-on, uh, you know, you just click instead of having all these, e all these thousands of post-it uh, you lose and uh, you cannot access to the application you want. And if you have already a virtual desktop, you can also see the virtual desktop in one of the tabs. So really, I found it, um, we are rolling it out internally. Uh, I'm really enthusiastic about the, the solutions. It's very fast rollout, very simple um, and uh, integrated. It's the platform for workforce mobility. So. Let's have a, a quick video on uh, ADAC. ADAC is the automobile club in Germany. Um, they have used Mirage to migrate uh, the, um, their desktops. Maybe I, I don't watch the video. Um, we, we just, uh, I just talked through the story. So basically, ADAC uh, have used the Mirage to, to migrate in a record time um, thousands of PC to Windows 7. And uh, they were very pleased. They are reference customers for us. Um, and uh, we have other customers like uh, Land Rover, who introduced uh, bring your own device uh, programs to support mobility of their users. Basically, the, the CIO, the CTO of, uh, of um, Jaguar Land Rover said, mobility was the exception. Now mobility is the norm. And we need to find a way to support mobility. And so they chose, really, um, VMware Horizon Suite. OK, so as a, as a recap, um, VMware's strategy and mission is to radically simplify IT again uh, by extending the power of virtualization from server to other layers in the, in the data center, like networking and storage. Nobody has a vision and an ability to implement this vision as fast as we have. Watch the space listen to what will happen at VMworld in a few months. We want then to extend seamlessly the software-defined data center approach on-premise, extend it to the public cloud in a seamless way for the customers so that the application doesn't need to be changed and that public cloud is not an additional silo that creates an additional mess for IT. And we want to embrace mobility which is becoming the norm instead of being the exception. And uh, with, uh, we have an approach where we provide uh, an integrated platform for mobility. And of course, the end game of all this is to deliver IT as a service, to deliver those infrastructure for cloud services, not only to the PC, but to all devices. And the future with that is uh, that we want to empower you to make this transformation and make this move to IT as a service. And we believe that virtualization is at, the, is at the center of this transformation of the future of IT. And the, the benefits fall into three categories. 
It's a matter of efficiency. It's mainly achieved through the, the software-defined data center. It's a matter of agility, because the business will ask IT to deliver more agility in IT, to have this competitiveness. They are looking in the business, like the Subaru guys, you know, they, they say in three months it's over, you know, we want the 1.3 million visitors in the next two months, you know, it's not uh, Manana's business, you know, they, it's all about business agility. And in terms of control, we see that um, IT can regain control in terms of public cloud consumption with the hybrid cloud model, but they can also gain control in the way this multi-device consumer environment on the receiving side is managed in a, in a consistent way. And all these without sacrificing choice. The users can define the, the devices they want. Uh, the business can work with different service providers to consume public cl cloud capacity when they need it. And you will see also, if some of you have uh, looked at the uh, OpenStack type of infrastructure, we will embrace OpenStack architectures by providing the best-in-class network virtualization solution for, for infrastructure stack that are not the VMware one, that are, for instance, OpenStack. So that was, uh, that was all. So thank you. Thanks for your attention. And enjoy the rest of the day.